guys, welcome back to, uh, to the Ocean of Master Budget. Uh, as you can see, that exercise is a remarkable uh, the, 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 the case study. We already uh, figured this out uh, during the class spending uh, two days, but uh, I think some students are still being struggled with uh, figuring out uh, this process because the master budget, including uh, the many step-by-step -step work creating uh, many types of, of budgets, sales budget, purchasing cost of a budget, and operating expense budget, and uh, the extract only cash payment and cash collection from it, and create operating budget and financial budget, including the capital budget and cash budget and budgeted balance sheet. So uh, I, I believe uh, this exercise is going to be really helpful in understanding uh, the, the majority accounting in the big picture, right? It is all about cost management, which is the cash management skills. Okay, uh, we don't want to read all the basic data based on the assumption that uh, you already have read or reviewed this other information. Uh, we just want to jump into this exercise and then you will see uh, while you see the process uh, process of this work uh, while I'm demonstrating okay the okay. so usually uh, organizations with effective budget system uh, have specific guidelines for the step-by-step -step work like this and then uh, the timing of the budget preparation also one of the key right so the, we have each uh, I'm sorry each of of the month of planning horizon uh, for three months and then we will create we'll create uh, the budgeted income statement the second quarter uh, from April to June in total right and uh, although the details differ maybe uh, the many companies use the different guidelines uh, but that process is really that helpful okay and then I wanted to be sure that you understand the source of each figure in each schedule and budget. Okay, let's just start scheduling the, the, the sales budget. The sales budget is the, always the starting point uh, for budget but because of the planned inventory levels, uh, purchases, and expenses all depend on the expected level of sales. We receive some cash from parents or employer and then based on that limited source we plan uh, the spending we plan and uh, spend uh, spending the money or cash or anything right so schedule uh, a it, it schedule a this a uh, that includes information about actual March sales and then we will stretch out uh, to the three month of the sales but it is already given here we go. We have the preparation of master budget for three months. Uh, the sales budget for the next four months is as follows. You might be wondering why do we have the July information? Because we will calculate the 60% of sales or remaining 40% or when we calculate the cost of goods sold, we will use the planned the cost of goods sold using the July uh, the sales amount. Okay, you will know the, the, the next scheduling process. Okay, anyway, we just convert, we transfer this information. Oh, I just want you to see in a big picture. Okay, and let's hide. We just transfer this information, which is already we planned this amount each month, right? So April to June in total is the sum of this three months. So why do we need this April to June in total amount in terms of sales? Because at the end of the day, we will create this budgeted income statement for the second quarter, right? Three months ended in June, the second quarter. So we'll apply this, the quarter, the sales amount into the budgeted income statement, okay? 
Okay, then what is the sales amount? Say, uh, what is the cash collection from the, the customers? The schedule B uses sales budget to plan when CHC will collect the cash. Again, the sales is not the same amount as cash collection because the, your client, your customers pay not the date at the, at the date of sales, right? They pay like one month later, or two months later, depending on their credits. We use uh, the accrual basis accounting, right? Based on the actual business transaction, mm -hmm. not the cash direction ratio. So in turn, we will use Schedule B to prepare the cash budget uh, in step three, right? In step three, in step three, here you go, right? Then you create the cash budget. So cash collection from customers include the current month cash sales plus collection of previous months, pre previous months information. Okay, so the cash sales, the sixty percent of current monthly sales, sixty percent. Where do you put? Okay, forty. Oh, it's current the fifty times sixty, right? Then we just using this function drag out then collection of last month last month credit sales so the 40,000 times right the 40 percent so that is actual cash collection uh, not actual but budgeted cash collection uh, from April to June so the sum of this to amount is 46,000 then we come up with the total cash collection so when we compare between the sales amount and the cash collection budgeted, now it's totally different, totally different, right? Totally different. So that's the point. We'll create the cash budget uh, the, the statement, and we'll create the operating income budgeted, or the, the budgeted income statement. And then we'll use this sales amount into budgeted income statement and the total cash collection budgeted in the cash budget statement. Okay, now let's move on to the purchase and cost of goods sold budget. The element of the purchase budget are tied together by a simple uh, kind of intuitive identity that ignores uh, the minor complications such as return and defects. We do not consider uh, this part, but related the fundamental use of inventory, actual the use of inventory to the source. That is the main part, right? So inventory is either sold or uh, or is carried over on hand to the next period. Uh, so in order to avoid the, the the inventory shortage, so as in the inventory, okay. So inventory comes from either beginning inventory or purchase. Therefore, the cost of the sold plus ending inventory equals the beginning inventory plus the purchase. Or the cost of goods sold is equal to beginning inventory plus purchase inventory minus ending inventory. When you transfer this equation in order to remain uh, the purchase in purchase, purchase is equal to the ending inventory plus cost of goods sold cost of goods sold, that means the available, available the inventory you can sell, right? You can sell. Minus the beginning inventory is the purchased inventory. We want to extract this purchased inventory from this schedule C, right? And then the we budgeted a cost of goods sold by multiplying the cost of merchandise sold, percentage is 70%. Where, is, where was that information? Now I will hide. And then here we go. Planning inventory, the cost of goods sold average 70% of sales, therefore inventory March 1st, the CHC pays for 50% each month, okay, blah, 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 like this, okay? And then we also have an information. The CHC wants to have an on hand of base inventory of $20,000 plus additional inventory equal to 80% of expected cost of goods sold. For the following months, that's why that's why we want to have this the sales amount in July, even though that amount is not directly related to the sales budget or cost of goods sold budget the, until June. 
but we will use this following information. Okay. Therefore, the inventory margin uh, will let read this one. Okay. Then let's apply this information, this basic data, uh, in order to create purchases and cost of goods sold budget. Okay. So the March amount, March amount, uh, a budgeted cost of goods sold is right as we read already forty thousand dollars times seventy percent. So we have twenty eight thousand budgeted cost of goods sold. Then plus desired ending inventory. Where is that information again? Where is that information again? Okay, twenty thousand dollars plus additional inventory equal to eighty percent of the expected cost of goods sold because deliveries from suppliers and customer demands are uncertain. So we want to be secure uh, with this ending inventory desired on hand, right? So in order to avoid the shortage of inventory, desired ending inventory have we calculated? 20,000 plus 80% times what we need is right the following months the following months cost of goods sold oh but we haven't calculated yet here okay then I'm gonna just stretch out this then we come up with this right 20,000 plus 80% times cost of goods sold uh, from the, 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 the budgeted cost of goods, following budgeted cost of goods sold. Good? Then let's stretch out like this. Okay? But the problem is the plus desired end inventory on June. Oh, we use April from April, the sum of April, uh, the April, May, June in total. No, no. We have to find the budgeted cost of goods sold, budgeted goods of sold, budgeted goods of sold, cost of goods sold on right July, July. That's why we need this information, right? So, seventy percent of fifty thousand dollars, the July sales amount is cost of goods sold. This part is cost of goods sold in July. Right? And times 80%. Right? So 48,000 is the desired and the inventory on June. Right? And then let's sum up this two. Let's stretch, drag out like this. And then let's the beginning inventory. Now we should understand the, the, the meaning of. The beginning inventory. The beginning inventory of March is the same as the ending inventory of February. Is that right? Or the beginning inventory of April is ending inventory of March. The beginning inventory of May is the same as the ending inventory of April. Right? So what do we want to know here in the beginning inventory of March is the February ending inventory. So how do you get the February ending inventory? $20,000 plus 80% of cost of goods sold. Cost of goods sold on March, right? Cost of sold on March. So cost of goods sold on March. Oh, sorry. Cost of goods sold on March. Right, that is the beginning inventory or ending inventory on March. Right, so that's it. Then, what is the April, the beginning inventory? We don't have to calculate it because the ending inventory of previous months is the beginning inventory of April. Right, so we just drag. Then we come up with the purchase with this equation, total merchandise needs minus the beginning inventory. Then let's stretch out. Then the total uh, from April to June, the positive cost of goods sold is sum of this three. Why do you need cost of goods sold in total for uh, three months? 
right? We will use this information when we create cost of goods sold the budget in budgeted uh, income statement for three months, right? Okay, then we done. Next exercise is Schedule B, the cash disbursement for purchase. Okay, this purchase is the value, the value on hand of inventory, the inventory value. But actual purchase payment is totally different from the purchase because just as we collect the cash from our customers based on their the credit uh, the transaction, we also pay we also pay the vendor uh, the based on the credit. We use the inventory we use inventory invoice. We use our credit card when you pay. We don't pay when you purchase goods right away. Right? This is not a business transaction, actual business transaction. That is the cash transaction if you follow that way. So we do not follow cash transaction again. Okay? So uh, you should be aware of this process too. Then the, we use the purchase budget to develop schedule D here. And in our example, the disbursements are 50% of current month's purchases and 50% of a previous month's purchase. We'll just get this information again when you read. Uh, here you go. The pays 50% each month's purchase in the month, right? And the next month for uh, the 50%. So we use this 50%. Okay. Does cash disbursement? How do you get it? How do you get it? Okay. The pre the last month times 50%. That's why we have created this March information in terms of purchases and cost of goods sold budget. Then drag. Then next is plus 50% of what? 50% of current month purchases. Okay? So we can just sum up this two. Let's stretch. Okay, so we come up with total dis disbursement for a purchase. So as you can see, when you compare the, the purchase and the cost, but cost of goods, goods sold budget and in, in, uh, the purchase amount and actual disbursement for purchase, which is payment, is now different, we can see. So with this, we will use this information when you create uh, the, the budgeted income statement. Uh, but when we create a cash, uh, it's the statement, cash budgeted statement, budgeted cash statement. We use this disbursement for uh, the purchase, right? Okay. And then we also have a schedule E and F and preparing, operating a budget. We have long way to go. So we are going to meet uh, in the next video clip. Okay. See you later.